Welcome back guys to Debt to Dollars and today I have a video for you on how to create your own Google advertisement, uh, specifically for e-commerce sellers, primarily for my audience uh, being Amazon sellers. So today I want to show you how to go from A to Z, how to create your own advertisement for your Amazon listing or your Shopify listing or any other e-commerce listing that you may want to promote and sponsor throughout the Google's platforms. So I'm going to show you my recommended advertisement settings, how to do it. And then if you want to replicate those settings, by all means, go ahead. I've had a lot of success using this strategy in the past uh, for my Amazon products. Uh, with Prime Day, Prime Day is coming up at the end of June. This is a great idea to begin learning how to do this now. So you can apply that come the end of June. That way you're set up to really capitalize and maximize your sales for Prime Day. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is either type in Google Ads into Google and it will take you to this web page, or you can simply just type in ads.google.com and that will take you here. So the first thing that we need to do is create a Google Ads account, which you can simply do by clicking start now if you don't already have an account. And it's going to prompt you to sign in with a Google email address that you may already have, your phone number, or if you need to create an account, just go ahead and create your account. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to just jump right ahead into the dashboard that you're seeing now. This is what your dashboard is going to look like on your desktop once you've created an account and you logged into your Google Ads account. So before we get going, I want to show you what the product is that we're going to begin advertising and how we're going to approach this. So first things first, what are we going to be advertising? We are going to be advertising this Amazon listing for these vaccine card protectors. This is one of my products, one of my test products that I've done in the past and I made a couple videos on. I'll put in the cards in case you're interested in how I came to this idea and to create this product. So what we want to do is we want to create an advertisement so when someone goes on Google and they type in something similar or exactly such as vaccine card protectors, your advertisement is going to be one of these top three or five listings. Um, as you can see here, here's a second one for Amazon.com, vaccination card holder, three pieces. So this would be a, um, a replica of what our ad might look like. So when someone searches that, your sponsored ad is going to be one of the first ones that pop up and then it takes them to the landing page, which is what you're seeing here. And that is your vaccine card protector. And that way you can convert their sales. Someone can go in and they click buy now. So it's as simple as that. And uh, I've really had a lot of success doing this using Google versus Amazon pay-per-click PPC advertising. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but first thing, let's go ahead and click this plus where it says new campaign. And Google is going to ask us, what is the goal of this advertising campaign? Is it to convert sales? Is it to bring in leads, to bring in website traffic to possibly your web page, brand awareness? So there's a lot of simple things you can do here. For experts, you may go in and you may click create a campaign without a goals guidance because you have your own certain criteria. But for this video, let's just pretend that we are, again, advertising these vaccination card holders and we want to bring in sales as a result. So we'll click sales. You can go ahead and click another one if something makes more sense for your type of advertisement. And then it's going to ask you, what is your campaign type? Your campaign type is how you want to sponsor your advertisement. Do you want it to pop up in the search results as we saw right here as they're popping up there? Do you want it to be displayed? Do you want it to be advertised on YouTube? That's entirely up to you. Now, I've had the best of luck in the past doing the search results as you're seeing here because a lot of people, they resort going to Google for what they need and then they end up clicking one of those top three links and it eventually brings them to Amazon or another e-commerce platform. So go ahead, click search here. All right, then it's going to bring us down here where it says select the ways which you'd like to reach your goal. Now with Amazon, you do not have control of actually editing the HTML or the code for that website since you don't technically own it and you're just, you know, for lack of better words, you're leasing it from Amazon. So there's no way to actually track your conversions if we were to click website visits as a result of our actually reaching our goal and that's how we track it. So I recommend clicking store visits. Um, one way that you could actually track your conversions if you create a landing page. So a landing page is just a page that acts as the middleman between your advertisement and your final listing page, which would be the Amazon listing. All right, and now we're going to go to our general settings for a campaign. And as I mentioned before, we up here we have our campaign settings, we have our ad groups, which is just a lower tier, and then our advertisements, which is the lowest tier, the specific advertisement for that product. As you can see here, here, just to confirm our campaign type, it's a search campaign and our goal is for sales. You can go ahead and change your campaign name. So just for awareness, when you come back and look at these, these are for my vaccination card holders, we'll call them. That way I know what this campaign is for. And if I had other vaccine card holders, I could also add them as ad groups or other advertisements just to keep things simple. Networks, I recommend just keeping these both selected. There may be a reason why you don't want to display it on the display network or the search network. That's entirely up to you and you can check or uncheck these as you wish. 
Before you jump down to the targeting and audiences here, make sure you click show more settings. This is going to ask you, when do you want your campaign to actually start? Today's date is June 8th. If I submit this, uh, this advertisement for review and it gets approved, it will be effective as of today and begin advertising. However, if you want to create a campaign in advance for Prime Day, let's say, for example, maybe we don't want to actually have it go live until the 21st or just before the Prime Day. So that's up to you. I'm going to actually put it for tomorrow to be active. So that will give me a day to allow this to be reviewed. And then I can prepare this advertisement for tomorrow to be launched. Additionally, you can put an end date. I usually just select no end date and then I'll pause or unpause the, the campaign as I wish. Uh, campaign URL options, don't worry about that. And same with these last two. Uh, the dynamic search ad settings, I do recommend keeping this um, automatic and how it's listed here. You can go ahead and put your manual settings in, but for what we're trying to accomplish here, I think it's a little bit in the weeds. Okay, going down to targeting and audiences. So you have the option to actually target specific areas of the country as well as people who speak certain languages. So if you're advertising over in Europe and you want to just specifically advertise to Spanish speaking Spaniards in Spain, then you can go ahead and you can do that. For us, I usually just focus on the United States and Canada. You can also add Mexico in here if you want. And then you can also add the languages. Um, Google's pretty intelligent here. They're already saying based on your targeted locations, French is a common language that people are speaking in Canada. So if you want to add that, you can. However, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to keep it as English speaking Canadians and people from the United States. All right, moving on is your audience. So for something like a vaccination card holder, there isn't really one primary audience that are going to be purchasing these. They're all age groups um, other than children, right? So one thing you want to think about if you do have a, a product that has a very specific audience, so let's say you're selling investment books, you can go ahead in here and type in investment and it's going to bring you a bunch of different audiences based on uh, cookies and cash data for those um, audience members, there's people with Google accounts that Google is actually tracking, um, if you knew that or not. So you, what you can do is you can select those type of individuals that may be interested in your individual investment book. And this is very good because you don't want to advertise to the general public, to people who have no idea what investment investing is, or if they have no interest in investing. So it's great to pick your audience for this, maybe investment services, retirement planning. Those are type of people that may be interested in reading your book. However, as I mentioned, for vaccination card holders, since I want to keep it general, I'm not going to put anything in there. So I'm just going to use Google's observation recommended settings here rather than targeting a narrow group as you may wish to do if you have a specific audience. Okay, and then next is your budgeting and your bidding. So first off with your budget, how much do you want to spend each day on advertising? So my goal for my Amazon products is not to spend more than 25% of that expected profit for that month uh, on advertising. Now, later in life, once I'm advertising this and I have organic sales coming in, I would decrease that down to 10 to 15% at a maximum. For you, you can use that rule of thumb or you can just look at your budget. Maybe you have an extra $100 left over because you had a better shipping rate from your supplier than expected. So if you have $100 and you want to spend it over two months, then maybe you only want to spend about $2 per day. However, let's say that you have that $100 and you want to advertise over a duration of 10 days, very aggressively, then we put $10 in here for your budget because 10 days times your average daily budget of $10 is 100 total dollars and you won't be spending more than that. Uh, this is important to know that each day you may not spend a maximum of $10 and other days you may spend over $10. But for that month, you will not spend more than the number of days in that month and the number of your daily budget, which is shown here as $10. Okay, and the last is bidding. So let's jump back here to these advertisements. And you may not know it, but there's a lot of people actually bidding on these advertisement spaces that you're not seeing. So what Google does is essentially it holds an auction. Whoever has the highest bid for this targeted keyword, they're going to put that advertisement here. And that is what your bid is. So think of this like an auction. Now, what do you want to focus on for that type of bidding? Do you want Google to focus on conversions, the conversion value, the number of clicks, meaning people actually click your listing when they see it, or the total number of shared impressions? Now, if you don't know what this actually means, uh, don't worry about it. You can look into it in a little bit more detail. Uh, but for a sales e-commerce platform like that we're using right here, we want to be focusing on conversions because that's people actually clicking your advertisement and purchasing your product. So Google's going to do a lot of things in the back end to optimize that for you. So we're going to skip over the set of target cost per action. We're just going to allow Google to use their algorithms to actually maximize those conversions and use that bid strategy. Uh, it's simple enough there. For more settings, there's nothing here that you really need to take a second look at and adjust. 
And same with the add extensions. Don't worry about that and just click save and continue. Next, we're gonna be brought to our ad group. Again, that second level below the campaign. And as you can see, it's actually populated a lot of information based off of that website uh, URL that we put in before, which is now being displayed right here. So your ad group, you can give it a name. I usually just keep it as ad group one because I, I typically do not create more than one ad group in a campaign. So adjust that if you need to. If you do not have a URL in here or a product or services, go ahead, copy that URL from your listing and then paste it right in here. And what you're gonna see, it should do it automatically, but since I already have stuff in here, it's gonna ask me if I want to update those keywords. Google is going to actually go to that URL and it's gonna pull all the relevant keywords that you want to target for advertising. So this makes it super simple, especially if you don't have any online software tools to actually look at what are the popular keywords, what are people typing in Google. Um, additionally, I also will use uh, online softwares like Jungle Scout and find the top keywords on Amazon and on Google, what people are using to search for these type of products. But trust me, Google does a great job of finding these keywords for you and it makes it very simple. So now if you wanna create another ad group, you could do that, but for this one product, this one product listing, we do not have to go ahead and do that and we'll just click save and continue, which brings us to, I guess, the more fun part, which is our advertisement, how it looks and how we're gonna set it up. So let's get into that now. You don't have to look at this first part. This is just gonna show you the ad group and your keywords that we selected in the previous page. And then next is the final URL. So let's focus on this. Confirm that this is the same URL as your listing because this is actually when, jump back here, when people actually click your advertisement, that's the URL that it's gonna take them to. So you wanna make sure that this is confirmed and it's correct. Next is the display path, which is the back end of the URL. So it's this part right here and you can't really see it, but you want it to be something simple and that's easy to understand. So when someone sees this URL, they know, okay, that's for a vaccine card holder, or that's for CDC vaccine card holders, whatever that keyword may be. I try to make it as simple as possible. So I'll put vaccine holder. Actually, we'll put vaccine card holder. And just note that you only have 15 characters on either end. So you can split up like that. That looks simple. And someone reading that knows, all right, it's on Amazon and it's a vaccine card holder. I know that's what I want. I'm gonna click this advertisement. Next, going down here, these are actually your headlines. So this is how it's gonna pop up for your headline up here. You want this to be something that also is very intuitive. It's simple, it's easy to understand. And this is one time that Google really didn't do a great job populating those headlines. So I don't want these, do not want that. Amazon.com three pack, you know, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. What, what, what is that advertisement for? So I'm actually gonna delete all of these and we can go ahead and we can actually look up here if we wanna add any of these. So like this vaccination card holder, that's a good headline that tells someone what it is. So I'm gonna put that in here. Okay, and then there's some other ones in here you can go ahead and put in there like vaccine card protector. Now go ahead and complete those. Okay, and you can add up to 15 headlines. I do recommend going ahead and adding all 15. I've only had six here just for this tutorial, but the more you add there, the better your chances that Google has more information to play with and it can determine which one of these headlines are people clicking more often and they'll put that in front of customers more often than not. Okay, and then your description. This is the actual text that's underneath your headline here in your advertisement. They have visit our store on Amazon shop now before, look at that typo, before it is out of stock. So as you can see for the pre-populated information here, this is actually pretty good. And it's actually just pulling it from my title and my description here. So I'm gonna keep that, that's good enough for me. So the last thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to your ad strength here. It's gonna tell you based on their feedback from Google, how strong your ad performance is. As you can see here, I have a poor ad strength. That's just because I didn't add all my headlines. I didn't include popular keywords that they were suggesting um, in unique headlines. So. If you come here and you see this poor, just go back to what, where the areas are that aren't completely green and filled and go ahead, add more headlines if you have to. You want this to be optimized and completely full. At that point, you are done and all you have to do is click save and continue. Once you click that, you're gonna be brought to the review tab here, which is just one last chance to really look at all the campaign information, the ad group information, the keywords, and your final advertisement just to confirm what you put in there is correct. So I usually really just look at this first part here for my campaign, make sure that my budget is $10 a day, not $100 a day. You know, it's very easy to make that simple mistake and it can really save you a lot of money if you're not paying attention. Make sure the campaign objective is correct, your start date, um, the, the locations that you're advertising in, and then also your strategy. This should be maximized conversions because we didn't change anything on those campaign settings. 
At that point, you can look into it a little bit more if you wanna look at the ad group, how your actual advertisement looks, which is shown here on the left. And then lastly, what I want you guys to do is click publish. That is your go live. Google will review your advertisement to make sure that it adheres to their policies. As long as you follow this tutorial and there's nothing crazy on your Amazon listing or your e-commerce listing, you should be good to go. And in a matter of hours, probably you'll begin advertising and you'll begin seeing impressions for your advertisement. All right, guys, I wish you the best of luck. I hope this really helps you out, especially with prime days coming up here. Um, it's great to advertise, especially when launching a product. It's great to begin advertising until you get a couple high quality reviews and then you begin to see organic sales start to come in. All right, catch y'all in the next video.